It's been about 24 hours since Wizard 101's latest Spellman update dropped. I've been going crazy, as you can see. And today, I thought I would share all the ways to get the new Spellmans in this update. I've done a couple of streams since this update dropped. This is a question that everybody's asking. How do you get these new Spellmans that just got added into Wizard 101? So here's absolutely everything that you need to know. Starting off with what I honestly believe is one of the best methods to getting Spellmans right now. All you have to do is go to Chrysalis and have an Elemental Retriever pet or a spirit retriever pet depending on what type of spellment that you want and you have to find wooden chests now what i've been doing is i've been frequenting you know smaller areas on multiple wizards and realm hopping so the areas that i've been using are the hive the shadow palace radiance reborn and the ruined alcazar these are all areas in chrysalis that are relatively small they have a lot of wooden chest spawns and if you have this talent you can just approach a wooden chest click on the elemental retriever and it'll give you spellaments if you're opening them in chrysalis that are all the way from rank 10 all the way down to rank 7. All of the new R2 spellaments. These also do drop balance spellaments if you're a balance wizard. However, they do it at a lower rate. So what I really, really recommend is if you have like a storm wizard, a fire wizard, an ice wizard, try to get this talent. Try to get it on a bunch of wizards and then maybe if you need it on others, maybe get a spirit retriever talent and then you can finish the balance ones while finishing both sets of schools as well. Now there is another option uh, if you're trying to do chests and you're not trying to farm, you know, combat wise it is a cantrip ritual chests now these i'm not as big a fan of because unlike the elemental retriever talent that you just saw in action these don't drop spell elements across the ranks if you were to open up a chrysalis cantrips ritual chest you would only get the spells from chrysalis which are king art and it's not school specific so if you're trying to get spell elements for one specific school these have no way to control that either and you need energy you need two other people to open each chest right if i were to magic touch this it only unlocks a third of the chest you need two other people to help you so this comes with a lot of constraints and i'm not really sure it's actually worth it and finally let's say that you don't have elemental retriever you don't have spirit retriever on a bunch of pads or you just you know don't have friends to open up cantr cantrips chests with you might want to use the scales of knowledge now i already made a video on this but the way this works is you can go to this specific scales that's at the end of chrysalis and if you apply the level scaling all of your stats including your hp will get scaled down so they're not as good even things like pip chance are going to be lower even if you are you have 100 which is very very annoying but this gives you an elixir that allows you to get spellaments from farming any boss in chrysalis now i recommend farming arch magus lore camp this boss is in the chamber of the orb uh, uh weavers you know dungeon instance whatever you want to call it he doesn't drop that many spellaments it's only about seven spellaments a run but the reason why this boss is very very special is because he doesn't actually summon the minions from this fight until the second round so if you have three other people to play with you what you can do is literally just triple fame into a single hit you could one turn this as long as you crit but i recommend because pip chance is not as reliable when you level scale so you got a fire that can immolate because you're guaranteed to always be able to immolate and just have three people faint as long as you crit which happens 95 percent of the time you will one turn this get seven spellmen you go out go back in restart it you can get spellmen pretty damn quickly doing this however there is a cat because it's a balance boss and it's also like a chrysalis boss you can get any spell element from the new r2 spell element so you can get balance spirit and elemental spell elements from this guy so while yes it's awesome if you have a lot of wizards this isn't a great method particularly if you're trying to like you know quickly get one school of spell element but it's the easiest boss you don't have to like you know do a bunch of minions leading up to it the minions from the actual fight aren't there until later so yes it's tedious yes it's slow but it is pretty reliable you might have noticed that a lot of people are already doing it now at the time i made this video what i'm being told is that there was a glitch with level scaling where instead of farming a chrysalis boss by level scaling down to like 100 you could farm a much much lower level boss like we're talking in crocotopia marleybone and still get our two spellmen king's isle patched this out while the game was still up this morning so officially if you're gonna level scale and farm bosses this is pretty much the best way to do it you would have to farm a chrysalis boss and you would have to find one that's easy to do repeatedly and this one seems to be the best one to do that way now especially if you do pvp you might have noticed notice that this update also made a bunch of beast moon spellments super super relevant now the rollout of this in my opinion is a little bit flawed i feel like they're continuing this pattern that me personally i'm not a fan of where the base version of the spell is sometimes not even allowed in pvp but also in the case of game changing spells like thieving dragon the base version of the spell doesn't have the utility that you would actually want 
I think they should change it where you can make the base version of the spell either path to start off with and then just upgrade the way that you want so that if you don't do Beast Moon, at least you still have access to the spell. And if you do Beast Moon, well, there's a big, big reason to keep going, right? I mean, this is like a 10% increase in the damage that it does. So I get a, an incentive to do Beast Moon without feeling like I have to do Beast Moon to use certain spells. But as it is right now, if you are going to do Beast Moon for spell elements, what I recommend is, you know, getting a bunch of these planters and constantly planting. It takes very, very little time to get the seeds to grow. So if you're really, really diligent, you can get a lot of seeds. And the seeds also do drop spellments. It's honestly a very passive way to get spellments. If you've never done Beast Moon before, it takes a while to get started. But this is how I got tons of spellments after I'd, you know, gotten the ball rolling initially. If you've never done Beast Moon, and I know that that is a lot of people, the best place to start is not with the PvP Beast Moon, but with the PvE Beast Moon. That one actually drops spellments for literally absolutely every single Beast Moon spelly. And what's really cool is that they updated these recently. So for every, you know, recipe, you get seven spellments. That means you could easily unlock a spell during one of the PvE events because the big, big limiting factor is going to be the moon gold dust. Now, you can get about six of these per wizard that you run the event with. You do have to beat every wave, so it's not super, super easy. But if you do the math out, right, if you get six of these, you know, from one wizard, like, and you have, like, I don't know, six wizards, you could, you know, theoretically, you could tier two, maybe, like, you know, five to ten spells even per event, depending on how much you grind. So this is great. Unfortunately, you have to wait for the specific event that this drops from to come around, and it just happens. So it's like a month away almost. And finally, the absolute best way to get the new Wallaroo spells or even Nova spells if, you if you're if you interested in, you know, the utilities that they do. Basically, you just want to get Cantrip's chests open. You want two other people to do this with. And you can do this in the worlds of Wallaroo or Novus depending on which world you want the Spellments from. All in all, y'all, this is a pretty massive update, right? Like, you're probably going to want Spellments if you just want your spells to do more damage or if you want them to do new utilities that you've never seen. And for the most part, it does seem like while there's more access to farming like you don't have to be a certain level to farm like in previous updates it is still very very tedious if your goal is just to you know unlock new utilities and get 75 spellments it's very very doable by farming or retrieving or cantrips chests but it looks like this update they're they're placing a lot more value on what a max tier spell is we're probably going to be busy getting these so i wouldn't try to normalize having a max tiered r2 spell with the way things are maybe we can just you know enjoy the process i guess i don't know it's tedious so i'm trying to like find a silver lining it is a little bit annoying though let me know what you guys think of the way they've done this what are your opinions on the beast moon spells do you guys think that you should be able to choose what your base spell does like i think that's what they should do and what do you guys think about your experience farming r2 spellments are there better ideas to farming than what has been covered in this video if you know that please feel free to share it i look forward to reading all those comments drop a like if you enjoyed leave us something new i wanted to answer this question because a lot of people been asking if somebody hasn't told you're awesome today they doing something i'll see y'all soon stay awesome and yeah y'all yeah.